Gentlemen, start your engine. Richard Petty has a record 13 Cup Series victories at Richmond, and his stretch at the track from 1967 to early 1975 might just be the most insane in NASCAR history. Over a 17-race span, Petty won an absolutely ridiculous 12 races, including 7 in a row at one point. Adding on to that torrid stretch of 7 in a row, if you expand that to 11 races, he had 9 wins and 2 second place finishes. As if winning all of that wasn't enough during that span, just take a look at the laps he led. 488, 444, 429, 383, 348, 330. That's all out of 500 laps. He led at least 163 in all 11 races and just over 3,600 of the 5,500 total laps completed, which comes out to almost 67% of all laps run. Again, over 11 races. Just an absolute historic stretch from the King. Younger fans might recognize the name Dave Marcus from his struggles late in the 1990s. He was an independent owner and in the twilight of his career. He was trying to survive during an era when almost all of those owners had already faded away. The thing is, that's far from Dave's legacy. We are talking about a driver who finished in the top 10 in cup points 8 times in his career, which included a second in 1975 where he only finished behind Richard Petty. He had 5 career victories with Richmond being the only track he won at multiple times. It's also the track where he had his most top 5s and top 10s at too. His first win at the track came in 1976 where he led 151 laps en route to his second career victory. That started a stretch where he had top 10s in 5 straight races there, and on a longer scale, 8 of 10. A few years later he picked up a rain shortened win in 1982 for the 5th and final win of his career. After the heartbreaking end to his 1992 championship run, Davey Allison was poised to contend off the bat in 1993. He picked up his first win of the season in the 3rd race, leading 155 laps en route to winning the Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond. He was able to celebrate the victory in victory lane with his dad Bobby, owner of the number 12 of Jimmy Spencer, who finished 13th. As everyone was anticipating this to just be another win for Davey, it was far from it. He found himself 5th in points after 16 races with 6 top 5s, but just couldn't find his way back to victory lane. Then, that tragic day in July took Davey away from us, leaving his victory at Richmond as the 19th and final win of his Hall of Fame career. The following season at Richmond saw an incredibly rare moment, a pre-race disqualification by NASCAR. Before the start of happy hour, a NASCAR inspector was talking to Rookie of the Year contender Jeff Burton and put his hand inside the number 8 car, only to find holes drilled in the roll bar the size of a quarter. The idea behind the large holes, which were hidden on top of the cage, were to reduce weight. The Stavola brothers team was kicked out of the event and fined $10,000. Burton sternly denied involvement in the incident, angrily taking himself out of the series of events. If Jeff Burton would have known about it, he wouldn't have sat in it. I laid in the hospital for a week in 1988 with a broken back and I understand safety. To be honest, it's stupid. The weight that was saved by drilling holes was maybe a pound or two pounds, and we just put 25 pounds of roof flaps in the roof. It's probably the dumbest thing I've ever seen done in an effort to make something light. He continued his rant. You don't build anything when it comes to safety and then drill holes in it. It's <laughs> stupid. The penalty cost the Stavola brothers team a shot in the race, but not their sponsor Ray Bestis. They moved over to the number 29 of fellow rookie Steve Grissom. It turned out to be a good night for the Diamond Ridge Motorsports team as Grissom picked up a career best 7th place finish. In August of 1997, Robert Yates announced that Truck Series rising star Kenny Irwin Jr. would replace Ernie Irvin as the driver of the number 28 Texaco Haviland Ford starting in 1998. This brought the months of rampant rumors of Irvin's future to a halt and put all of the spotlight on the young driver from Indiana. Irvin was to finish the season in the number 28 car, but Yates got a head start by having Irwin run a handful of races in the number 27 for David Blair. The first race on the schedule for Irwin was the Exide NASCAR Select Batteries 400 at Richmond, and boy did he back up all the hype. 
Irwin qualified the number 27 car on the outside of the front row for his Winston Cup debut, starting alongside former Cup champion Bill Elliott and 19 spots ahead of Irvin. He led 12 laps during the event, ran well all night, and finished 8th. He further cemented himself as someone to watch heading into his first season in a championship caliber ride. It turns out things didn't really work out well between Yates and Irwin, but the Irwin-Richmond connection always seemed to click. He had four top 10s in six races at the track, and one of his two DNFs there came in a race where he qualified third. Sometimes a track has too many cool and underrated moments, so we really didn't want to wait until next season to bring you more. So here's a bonus sixth story about Richmond. Switching to the Bush Grand National Series, the number three AC Delco Chevrolet seemed to always have the magic touch at Richmond. Steve Park ran two races at the track in the car, starting second both times while picking up a third place finish in the spring, and he won in the fall. Park moved to the Winston Cup Series at the end of the 1997 season as Dale Earnhardt Jr. took over the ride. He drove four races at the track over his two championship seasons in the series, picking up two wins and a runner-up finish. His other race was a 32nd place finish, but that came in a race where Jr. started fourth and was running in the top 10 when the team was caught up in an accident. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Keep an eye out next week for our first video highlighting some old school stories from the NFL and another edition of The Five, this time on some NASCAR stories from Watkins Glen.